Hello everyone! This presentation will detail drug discovery and development in the preclinical phase. Provided is an agenda for this presentation with timestamps for your convenience. This timeline displays an overview of drug development where preclinical development refers to all the activities that ultimately link drug discovery to the initiation of clinical trials. Preclinical research involves the evaluation of potential therapeutic interventions in cells and animals. Candidates for entry into clinical trials can then be selected based on their effectiveness and safety in disease models. All drugs require data from various toxicological preclinical studies to support their potential safety in humans before the clinical trials can begin. The FDA requires researchers to use what are called good laboratory practices, or GLP, that are defined in medical product development regulations in these preclinical laboratory studies. One federal policy that preclinical researchers must be aware of is the Public Health Service Policy on Humane Care and Use of Laboratory Animals, or PHS policy. This is a set of standards administered by the Office of Laboratory Animal Welfare of the National Institutes of Health. And these standards require institutions to establish and maintain proper measures to ensure the appropriate care and use of all vertebrate animals that are involved in research activities conducted or supported by the U.S. federal government. The Institutional Animal Care and Use Committee is a standing committee mandated by federal law through PHS policy, which approves any research activities that involves animals. Some of the other main functions are listed on this slide. NJ Act's researchers require prior approval for research involving live vertebrae animals as defined by the NCATS CTSA program on this slide. A link to the worksheet with the criteria required will also be provided with this slide deck. In order to obtain approval to conduct research involving live vertebrae animals, the following four criteria must be met and defined. First being the description of procedures, the justifications for the animal research, the interventions used to minimize pain and distress in the animals, as well as the method of euthanasia used. Now we will discuss the objectives and processes that comprise preclinical drug research. The primary objective of preclinical drug research is to determine potential safety and efficacy of the drug in non-human subjects. Safety is determined by accurately modeling the desired biologic effect of the drug in animals in order to predict the treatment outcome in patients. Efficacy is determined by identifying and characterizing toxicities that are associated with the drug, and this is designed to predict adverse events in people for an informed risk assessment. The goals of preclinical toxicity studies include identifying potential human toxicities of the drug, designing tests to further define the toxic mechanisms, as well as predicting the most relevant toxicities to be monitored in clinical trials. Several quantitative estimates are desirable to be ascertained in these tests. These include the no effect dose, which is the maximum dose at which a specific toxic effect is not seen, the minimum lethal dose, which is the smallest dose that is observed to kill any experimental animal, and, if necessary, the median lethal dose, or LD50. This is the dose that kills approximately 50% of the animals in a test group. Presently, due to animal care protocol, the LD50 is estimated from the smallest number of animals possible. This slide lists a variety of safety tests that are conducted, the results of which are included in the Investigational New Drug or IND application following the termination of preclinical studies. The types of tests can include acute or chronic toxicity, as well as the effect of the drug on reproductive performance, the carcinogenic potential of the drug, as well as mutagenic potential. 
you will see that the species approach for these tests can change and the FDA usually mandates two species be tested. This slide lists the four major stages of identifying a potential drug entity. A drug discovery program initiates because there is a disease or condition without suitable medical products available for treatment. The outcome of preclinical research is the selection of a target, which is a broad term that can be applied to a range of biological entities that may include proteins, genes, or RNA, for example. The target may require further validation prior to progression into the lead discovery phase in order to justify a drug discovery effort. Lastly, the compound which shows the most promise is identified as the lead. Many research teams find it helpful to develop a target product profile, or TPP, to guide preclinical development of the drug. The TPP provides a framework to ensure that the program supports the intended clinical trial design and therapeutic use of the drug. According to the FDA, a TPP is a format for a summary of a drug development program that is described in terms of labeling concepts. It can be prepared by the drug sponsor and then shared with the appropriate FDA review staff. It ultimately facilitates communication regarding the drug development program, but its submission is completely voluntary. This slide lists the contents that may be included in a TPP, notably the pharmacology, toxicology, and other pharmacokinetic preclinical studies, as well as a well-characterized route for the drug that is aligned with the route of administration to be used in animal studies. To summarize, following identification of a drug target and candidate compounds, several early research activities can contribute to the selection of a lead candidate for preclinical development. These activities provide the basis for an investigational new drug application to the FDA for permission to initiate clinical testing in humans. Shown are the enumerated references used. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation.